How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Blue Shadow. Welcome back to Forgotten Trace of uh, Natos and Nostalgia. Now, things got really interesting last episode. Super, super interesting. Where with, uh, we followed Makoto, uh, Madoka. What am I talking about, Makoto? God, I've been playing too much Persona. Uh, Madoka actually went to the school to meet with Ibuki and uh, Kazuya. She can walk, she can act really well, and it did really good. And she says, like, hey, I need to talk to Ibuki and Kazuya on the roof. This is important. And I'm worried that this is, like, her last action before she leaves, leaves. Uh, which would be really sad, because I like her as a character a lot. So naturally, you know, maybe she does have to die. <sighs> I don't want that to happen. But yeah, anyway, so we're going through this, and we're going to see... But apparently we're going to see things now from Miu's perspective. So I'm not sure what that's going to be like. Poor Miu. Now that I've got a bit of a better glimpse of her, like, she's gonna... She still really rubs me the wrong way in a lot of ways, but I also kind of get her now a lot more. And look, it's interesting, because, like, look at the pattern of this chapter, because I think this might be the last part of this chapter. Miu, Kazuya, Madoka, Kazuya, Miu. Like, it's reflective. That's really cool. I'm sure it doesn't. it's not really that important, but, you know, I like symmetry. I think most people do. But, yeah, so... Let's just jump right in, I think. Not much point in dilly-dallying. I, I really want to know what's going to happen next. That that jumping sound always gets me. Like, I don't know why, but I always jump a little bit. Like, it just shocks me. Okay. Ooh, it's like a recital room. Oh, it's a gym. It's just a normal gym, but they have a stage. <laughs> I grew up going to a church, and we had a gym very much like this. This one obviously looks a, it looks a little bit bigger, but it had a, it was a basketball court that also had a stage. So this is really actually kind of oddly rem, reminiscent for me. Miwa, Miwa. Yeah. Miwa, ちゃんとここにいる. Yeah. Miwa, ちゃんとここにいる. 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 Right. Okay. Wait, so she's like, she talks about herself in the third person, but like, she's actually like talking to herself? Whoa. Okay, she's she's actually like like a Smeagol goleming right now. What on earth? Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh no. I think this is bringing about a new definition of inner demons. Hmm. So she might be... She might see, like, a lot of people think that she's kind of goofy, but very, like, charming and innocent. But, like, her thoughts aren't. Um, that's something that's very reflective of me, especially, like, growing up. I never got into trouble. I was never like, I never, I got in detention once in high school because I, I always, always forget a pen in English. And I had a teacher who very like strictly like being, bring a pen, like you got to bring a pen and she'd have to loan it to me, loan, loan me pens all the time. Cause I just kept forgetting and just didn't care enough to do it. Finally, she's got upset enough at me. She put me in detention for it to try and like, you know, make me be more, pay more attention. So yeah, like. When people like share stories about like getting in trouble in, 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 in their youth, I got put into school in school suspension for not bringing a pen to class. <laughs> Probably the most risky thing I ever did. Well, not okay, to be fair, the only thing I got caught doing, but I also just didn't do a whole lot, which made it easy to get away with when I did decide to do things like skip school. Um, heck, I usually got permission to skip school or at least finagled a way to make it look like I did. But, uh, she has a dark side to her, and I did too. I do. I mean, I'm not perfect. I try to be a decent person, and I think I mostly am, but I can think of instances where I definitely 
was not, you know, I wasn't always and haven't always and probably will continue to not always be an exemplar of any kind. Like, I'm a flawed person. I do my best and I believe I've never made any egregious things. Probably more spiteful things. For in particular individuals, maybe, who I didn't like. Um, I've probably been less than kind or maybe, like, I, I don't like using the word manipulative, but kind of socially manipulative. It's, it's tough to explain. I don't really get into the details. Just know that no one's perfect, but she's beating herself up because of her imperfections, which is something I actively do too. Like, I'm a lot better because I think I've come to terms with the fact that, you know, I'm human. And, you know, as long as I'm trying to be a decent person, like, mistakes can be forgiven. But especially when you're young, that doesn't always feel like the case, especially if there's a part of you that just hates yourself. And, like, that's not as uncommon as it might seem. <laughs> <sighs> I don't like this inner monologue. Like I said, it really seems like she's like talking to like a demon. Is that her trying to like trying to get rid of the like the the inner voices? Getting some very strong Mayuri vibes. キリ。痛みでごまかす。真実。叫んだって。どうにもならない。宿命。だって。仕方ないでしょ。ミユの中にある時計は進まなくなって。うん。やがて止まってしまうの。ミユの壊れた時計は誰からも愛されない。what does that mean? So, maybe she's sickly, which is why she's still so young in appearance. Talks about her clock stopping, kind of like this idea of like her progression has kind of stopped, her growth and everything. And she's implying that she's going to die. And she really wants to trade... She wishes she could have the life of another, like Ibuki, being able to be childhood friends with the people that Miyu cares the most about, having that connection that she feels she's lacking, and having the time that she feels she's lacking. But again, like, Ibuki's kind of a poor example because she's struggling with her health, too. So, fetch, man. It feels like everyone in this story's got some big medical problem. <laughs> Hmm. What does she steal? Hmm. Okay. Guess we continue on then. The mystery gets deeper. That's all I can say about that. What does she steal? That's the thing that's really weird. Ooh, music's changed. Star is the fourth, autumn star's longing, hope springs eternal in human heart. Hmm. Star is the fourth. Is that just like, we're in like the fourth like part? This wind feels nice. She cuts between me and Ibuki and slowly walks toward the fence. Is she smiling? Or is she feeling sad? Her expression could be taken as either. This expression is quite different from the smile she showed in the classroom. Seeing her like that, I have to focus to stop my cheeks from drawing back. The expression I'm showing the two of them right now 
is definitely more mixed than hers. This kind of wind was blowing in that forest, too. I thought it was much more co much cooler than this. That cold, dark forest. My heart was like that. Yeah, that's right. That forest was a little hand mirror reflecting my true self. She whispers this. This kind of wind was blowing in that forest, too. Cold, dark forest. That forest. The cold, dark forest I saw in my dream comes to my mind. Well, she knows about my dream, it seems. Normally, that would be unthinkable. There's no way such a thing could happen. But there's an uneasy feeling in my mind that just won't go away. The true cause of that uneasiness is the name she called me in the classroom. So, it's because of that name. Who the heck is she? Who? I, I gradually start feeling worse and worse. I was truly happy. It'd been a while since I'd felt like that. I put on a show by all, all for myself on the stage of, uh, of that snowscape. <laughs> I wish I could have shown it to the both of you. Yeah, I really wanted you to see it. My performance as an actress. It's my dream to be the theater actress who performs around the world. Have you heard of Ibuki? About me, I mean? Movies would be nice too. Hollywood. Action movies are cool, and romantic comedies are wonderful, too. Ah, oh, my beloved Brad... Brad Pitt. <laughs> I keep... I keep trying to call the real name. I wanted us to star together. The conversation suddenly changes. Her previous expression has completely changed, and now she has a joyful smile as she talks on and on at fast pace. Even so, she said she put on a solo performance on the stage of the snowscape. Among them, I especially love the Jokshaw re Recompense. <laughs> I may have to take it out, talk to Ibuki about that one a few times. But that scene where the main character is finally liberated from behind those fences and spreads out his arms while looking up at the sky. Shawshank Redemption is a good movie. My heart danced like crazy. I was really excited. I, I too, I want to feel like that. Madoka. Ibuki speaks gently as if to rein in the girl from her joyful babble. Madoka, you really surprised me. Your legs, when did they get healed? I can't believe it. Didn't you tell me that they couldn't be healed? For some reason, Ibuki's lips tremble as she speaks. Why has Ibuki been like this for a while now? Like she's surprised or scared. She's making that kind of expression. <laughs> They're healed, and I'm back. How, uh, how am I without my wheelchair? I'm incredibly cool, right? Is it the result of rehab? <laughs> well, something like that. Like the power of the miracle I prayed for? How are they? Look, my legs are long and slender like a deer's. Though, I guess I shouldn't say that about myself. Madoka? Is she friend of Ibuki's from the hospital? From listening to the conversation, it seems her legs were injured. And she came here to show Ibuki the results of her rehab. I get that much, but I don't understand why she called me out here too. She also said something in the in the classroom. That she came to see me. You did come here to see Ibuki. If so, why am I here too? That's right. Why is Kazuya here too? Madoka, isn't this the fir first time you've met him? Her expression clouds over and she looks down pensively. If I'm misunderstanding, go ahead and say so. B but earlier, you mentioned the snowy world and the name So. Yeah. Did you maybe have the same dream I did? Dream? What dream? Kazuya? It seems Ibuki doesn't know what I'm talking about. Obviously. I don't even know what I'm saying. What ridiculous crap am I spouting? Well, I don't know. No, sorry, it's nothing. There's no way such a ridiculous thing could be true. After a couple of self-depreciating laughs. That... Hey, would that really be so strange? The girl who had been quietly looking down stares straight at me and whispers this. Huh? Think about it. Is it really that strange? There are a lot of strange things that ex exceed our imaginations occurring in this world. 
In the time from when we're born until we die, there are limits to the extent of actions we can take. We go round and round in place like a dot pinned on the map. In that little area we're born, we're happy, we're sad, then we die. Don't you think it's kind of a waste? If we jump out of that small, limited, limited world into a world where we no longer know, yes, there are lots and lots of events and things that no one understands that make you dot your eyes. I was like that too. After the accident, I was in the hospital for three years. Just like a bird trapped in a cage. I would just gaze at the sky through the bars of the cage and let my thoughts go to that huge blue sky. They were days of struggle, unable to escape the caged world. My legs had no feeling or pain. Every day I would fling, fling false wishes at my legs while I'd work and work with sweat on my brow. What was my goal? Where was the goal line? In the pitch blackness, I would fumble around with my hands, wandering around, searching for the light that we call a dream. I was always alone in that small hospital room. I was lonely, but... I think I was able to give my, my give it my all until now because Ibuki was there. Hey, Ibuki. Madoka. You are the only one who could show me the world. But today, I left that place. I obtained the key to the cage. I flew free for the blue sky. What is she saying? Yeah, I think my favorite character is probably not here anymore, really. This is like a last hurrah, but like, I'm not even sure she's physically actually here. Her story is so abstract, I don't understand at all. Is she trying to convey something to me? Or did she really come here to see Ibuki? Kazuya, so far, you've only lived inside that little circle inside you. You probably think anything that occurs outside of that is impossible. But you see, if you peek into those strange phenomena, there's just reality. Even, even having the same dream. That is without a doubt one phenomena that can occur in reality. Uh, what are you getting at? Are you trying to say it's not weird even if strange things happen? That's right. Then could you talk in an easier to understand way? If you know something, just tell me. People might think there's something wrong with me for saying this, but... Did you have the same dream as I did? Dream, huh? That dark forest in the white world. You mean that place? Yeah, that place. I could feel cold sweat slide down my back. Things that shouldn't occur in reality are actually happening? The two of us had the same dream. But that's just a coincidence. It was inevitable. She suddenly cuts me off. Inevitable? In oh, sorry. <clears throat> inevitable? Yes, it was inevitable, not a coincidence. That was meant to happen. In other words, we had the dream because we were supposed to. It had to happen like that. That's all. Kazuya, why are you so concerned about it? We had the same dream because we were supposed to? That coincidence was actually a matter of course. What the heck? Am I crazy? My head hurts when I talk to her. When a person walks, if they put out their left leg, next comes the right leg. Do you think about every single step? When they want to proceed forward, a human naturally puts out their legs and walks, right? It's just like that. Just like that? That this and that are two entirely different issues. Then I'll ask you a question instead. Kazuya, why are you so interested in that dream? Th that's be because the girl, the memories. I'm at a loss for words. This girl had the same dream as me. If we, I were to say, it might just be that. If it were just that, it'd be no big deal. Nothing could be co to be concerned about. Maybe people sometimes have the same dream. But why do I feel so uneasy? That dream. For some reason, it was very clear, and I distinctly remember it even now. Even though I usually forget dreams right away. The memory of that dream is still clear in my head. I want you to remember with your heart. If you don't, it'll be sad for the per for that person. That person? The... Who? You've met them too. Miss Doll, the, pr the person as beautiful as a doll. That person as beautiful as a doll. That person as beautiful as a doll. 
When I trace the meaning of those words, the face of that beautiful woman comes to mind, and my chest throbs. I remember. The beautiful doll she speaks of is probably that woman. The one singing that lullaby at the lake. Her... That woman who held me in her arms and kissed me. Guilt pours over me again, and there's a stinging in my chest. Even more so because Ibuki's right in front of me right now. Why do I... Do Why did I remember something like that? Oh, you can't remember? Or maybe you don't want to remember such a thing? Uh, hey. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'll keep that secret. I got to see something nice, too. Could she have seen even that? Is she saying she knows? I immediately glance at Ibuki out of the corner of my eye. She just standing there, looking kind of uneasy. Well, I would be! Fetch! It's uneasy being a part of the conversation. Can you imagine not having an understanding of what the heck's going on? She's just listening to us talk without trying to join the conversation at all. Yeah, she really can't join. I feel a little relieved. And feel even more guilty for it. More importantly, there's no way. It's unbelievable. The gaze I felt in that forest was hers? If so, everything matches up. But the more it matches up, the more unbelievable it becomes. Ooh, that's like it's science in general. The more answers we get, the more questions to stack. For every one answer, we get a million new questions to ask. This kind of thing... It's impossible. We even had the same dream, and yet she was even in, she, was she, yet she was even my in my dream. What's wrong? You got quiet. What in the world could you be thinking? Did you remember a little? What am I thinking? You should know that I I've been listening to you like this. Oh, I see. But well, something clicked now. The strange gaze I felt belonged to you, didn't it? I bluff a lie. Honestly, I'm terribly shaken, but if I let her see me panic, I'll get caught up more and more in her pace. Why? I'm scared. I can tell my legs are shaking. Why? Oh, you noticed. That's right. It, it was creepy. You were laying down, Kazuya. So I thought you didn't notice at all. Laying down? What is she saying? When I felt that gaze, when I threw the cell phone... Is she misunderstanding? There are also parts of this that aren't adding up, but... Laying down, you say. You were laying there in your uniform with a look of despair. Weren't you cold? Laying down. When I was laying down that time, when I tried to run and my legs got tangled up. That's right. Before I had heard the singing. She was watching that too? I was laying down, but that's not when I felt the gaze. It was much, much earlier. What the heck? Somebody else was in the dream! What is this strange uneasiness? Well, what I saw was... Whatever, who cares about that? I'm cut off by her. More importantly, remember... Everything. What? Remember... Remember what? Aren't you merely saying weird things in order to tease me? You don't really know anything, do you? I know that I'm being inconsistent. No matter how much I tell myself to calm down, my shaking won't stop. But is there anyone who could stay calm in this situation? Things that shouldn't happen in reality are happening, and anyone would lose their composure. Yeah, I get that. I really do. It's like... It's one thing to be reading it in a story, but if it were actually in real life, like all of us would be like, Nah, this is like some weird, stupid plot. Am I being pranked right now? Is someone recording this? I guess there's no helping it. Then I'll give you a hint. A hint. She's being roundabout again. Why is it always like that with this when she speaks? Is she trying to make me realize something? Do you remember seeing that forest? Do you feel anything when you see that magical world? The one wrapped entirely in snow? That world, the forest, you want me to remember. Even if you tell me to remember, that forest was cold and dark. That's it. You mean the dream, right? You saw most of it from start to finish, didn't you? What am I supposed to remember other than that cold, dark forest? No. Long, long ago, you've seen it. In that, that world. Long ago? Is she saying she knows my past, too? But it's true that it was strangely nostalgic, and I felt a strange sensation. A strange sensation similar to deja vu. But I can't remember anything beyond that. 
No, I never knew anything from the start. No, sorry, but I don't understand. <sighs> it seems you really don't know anything. Yeah, because I don't. But even so, you resemble him. Resemble him? I don't know. But it seems you resemble him. Resemble who? The person that started with. The story started there. Yes, it started with him. Huh? What are you saying? She closed her eyes, like she's concentrating on something. The person it started with. I resemble him? This show guy that woman told me about? I can't think of anyone else. While I'm thinking about things, she opens her eyes again. You should understand this. Yes, soccer. Your broken leg. All of your hopes and dreams were smashed. Just a completely meaningless long expanse of time piercing you. You even lost sight of yourself. A space of nothingness. And if you found a light in there? If light poured in from a break in the rain clouds? Amidst that blank time? You would rely on that one distinguishable guidepost and continue on. Hey, hold on, Madoka. Ibuki cuts into our conversation. What's with her? Why does she know about this too? Even the dreams I gave up on. Oh, it's probably because of Ibuki. I quietly peek at Ibuki's face, and as I thought, she looks apologetic. No, it's fine. I don't care about that now. Don't make that face, Ibuki. I was like that too. So I understand your feelings. And that woman who's as beautiful as a doll? Yeah, I understand her feelings too. Doll. My heart throbs again at that world. Word. As if to drown out the pounding, I raise my voice a little. You keep talking about feelings! To what extent do you understand my feelings? There's no way a stranger could understand my feelings even a little. No, how could you understand? Hey, remember, in that snowy forest? You were able to return to your true self too. In that dream, you were the you from when you had such high hopes. Able to return to my true self. You became the you you wanted to be. The way he sees himself, or how he used to see himself. Cursed by regret, you cursed fate and hate it. You said goodbye to your pathetic self, and returned to the you overflowing with hope. That's... what the heck? You got a taste of it in that forest, didn't you? Happiness? Returned my true self. The me overflowing with hope. In that forest. You ran, right? You could run, couldn't you? With all your might. Without worrying about your injury. Those words make me realize something. No way. Her too? Were you? Healed too. Your legs. Were well, your legs healed after that dream? <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't after having that dream. It's not a world that grants wishes. Her expression softens just a little. The reason I entered that dream and the reason you entered are fundamentally different. Also, the people who enter that dream all end up like that. Different? What's different? Weren't our situations entirely the same? Or is she saying there's a, some kind of rule where you're having that dream? You and I are connected. Even if everything were different, we're connected by a single thin line, like a thread of silk. That's why I understand your feelings. But I can't comprehend something. Comprehend? You're naive. Far too naive. What the heck? The dream you want to come true. The dream you gave up on. The dream you ended up pretending you don't have and ran away from. Yes. What you tried to make come true was nothing more than a game. You have no right to speak of hope. That kind of half butt attempt at making a dream come true is laughable. <sighs> okay, Madoka. Why the shade? What is happening? Holy crap, what is happening? Why won't you think of giving it another shot? Is that all your dream was? Madoka, don't talk like that. Ibuki cuts into our conversation. Ibuki, shut up. Ah, sorry, but let me say something. Why am, why am I saying these things to Kazuya? I'm sorry. Sorry, Ibuki. Ibuki looks at me apologetically. Don't look at me like that, Ibuki. I'm, path I'm pathetic. I know that too, but enough. 
I'm even being lectured by this girl I just met for the first time. Go ahead and laugh. Yeah, laugh at how I am. That's enough, okay? Cut me some slack already. Why is everyone starting starting crap with me? Such pain. All of it. To aim for being a professional soccer player with this leg? It'd be a pointless. The intense pain where I run. The cheers that stopped. The thick snickers of the guys who used to envy me. Ibuki's smile that I haven't seen much of since that day. Just what does Ibuki think of me? Is she angry? Is she sad? Or possibly both? She probably wants to me to aim for my dream again. That's why she's talked to, her, talked to her about me. I know that. I know that, but... But isn't it impossible? I broke the promise we made when we were young. Screw that, dude. Come on. You make promises when you're kids that don't mean anything. It's because you don't know what you're doing. But the dream is dead, if that's really your dream. The two of us will definitely become active soccer players. Then I'll always cheer you on, forever and ever. The promise. We can try and keep that promise the second time. Ray, me, and the one who may have been looking forward to it the most, Yubuki. Holy fetch! It splits? It splits! Oh, are we just gonna see the same scene from two different perspectives? That's kind of cool. Hmm. All right. I kind of want to see what Ibuki says first. Madoka. What in the world is wrong? Her tone. This conversation. Something's off. For some reason, it doesn't feel like reality. But why is Madoka questioning Kazuya so much? It's like she wants him to aim for his dream of soccer again, but honestly, I'm the same. I want to see it. That time when Kazuya is burning with passion for soccer again. But that's not something I can say when I ta take Kazuya's feelings into consideration. Certainly, Madoka is able to stand on her legs now because she gives her all. She must have come to see Kazuya to show him that. She came here to show me that too. That must be it. In order to encourage Kazuya, to show that your dream can come true if you don't give up. But, Madoka, not everyone is strong like you. It takes an incredible amount of time to recover once something's been broken. You worry, soliloquizing. Truly wondering if you can do it or not, and coming to a cruel conclusion. That's right, me too. But thank you, Madoka, for worrying about Kazuya. I, gen gen I gently start to speak to her. Madoka, I understand your feelings, Madoka, but... Ibuki! I look straight at Madoka, at those legs of hers. The person in front of me isn't the normal Madoka. It's the Madoka who is standing on her own two legs. I have questions. Things I'm more curious about than her supporting Kazuya's dream. Something I want to accept but can't. It's unbearably strange to me. I heard that Madoka's legs wouldn't be healed. I heard that from her own mouth yesterday. And yet right now she's standing before me like the injury never happened. This is... It must be a miracle. I can't think of anything other than a miracle. But this can't be settled with just that word. No matter how much rehabilitation a person who was in a wheelchair, unable to walk for years does, wouldn't they be able to stay... They, would they be able to stand up just because they're healed? I'm really happy for her, but... Why? I can't help but feel a little uncomfortable regarding Madoka. And a bit scared. It feels like a different Madoka from the usual one is standing in front of me. She talk she's I start talking to Madoka in order to see the pound to ease the pounding in my chest. I want her to be her usual self. Madoka, I want you to listen to me for a minute. I'm sure you have some reason for calling Kazuya and me here. I'm prepared to listen. Madoka stares at me, but doesn't look displeased. Her expression looks like she's de she's determined. Ibuki. Sorry for butting into the middle of the conversation, Kazuya. Just let me let me talk to Madoka for a little. Well, sure. I don't mind. Kazuya looks a bit relieved. Of course, I'd be exhausted too if someone attacked me with that barrage of questions. Hey, 
Madoka, you probably have things you want to talk to Kazuya about, but I want to talk to you too. Like, our usual joyful conversations. Madoka doesn't respond. She looks like she's mulling something over. Madoka? As I'm about to start talking again, Madoka says something unexpected. Sorry, Ibuki. Of course I want to have fun talking to you too, like usual. Sorry about the play, talk about movies and the school. There's so much more I want to know and so much we haven't talked about enough. But we can't today. There's not enough time. There's no time. What is she talking about? Does she have somewhere she needs to go after this? Does she need to be go back to the hospital for a while? Maybe she's not supposed to leave yet? The air is heavy, and while I'm thinking it might be something I shouldn't t touch on, the word just comes out. Time? It feels like the air gets even heavier. I feel like I've said something unbelievably bad. I'm full of regret. I can't explain it to you right now, but you'll understand everything eventually. What is it? Something I'll understand eventually. There really must be a reason she called me here, too. Until now, she was only talking to Kazuya, but it's definitely something that related to me, too. Hey, Ibuki. We're friends, right? Madoka suddenly throws a question at me. Why would she ask me that now? That goes without saying. I take it head on. Of course. We're friends. Why ask me that now? That's right. We're best friends. You're my irreplaceable best friend. I wasn't able to give it my all until because, until now because you were there. Yeah. Yeah, you're something so precious to me that you've even become a source of emotional support. That's why... That's why I've decided not to lie to my precious best friend anymore. Lie? You lied to me? Yeah, I told you a big lie. Madoka told me a big lie. Madoka told me a big lie. Madoka's always smiling like the sun. Unlike me, she's an incredibly strong person. I like how they, they saw each other the exact same way, right? This incredibly strong person who's always smiling. <laughs> That's ironic. Well, not ironic, actually. It's perfectly expected. But if from their shoes, it would be ironic. But that Madoka lied to me. Madoka, you lied? Yeah, I told you a big lie. Madoka. Sorry, I'm weak. That's not true. The only the one who's weak is me. When I heard about your legs yesterday, the courtyard, I was really surprised then. I thought you were really strong, being able to show your weakness with such indifference. I can't do something like that. I'm a dense, honest person. I should have spoken then, too, about myself. I wasn't sure if I should, but I couldn't do it, because I'm not a strong person like you are, Madoka. Just like that, I always run away. You think so too, right, Ibuki? Keep, keeping quiet about something important to your best friend, you can't do it. I'm hiding something from Madoka, so maybe that's the way it sounds. It's like she suspects something, the way she's talking. No, she shouldn't have noticed. I even told her I have a bad heart. So that, just that. No matter how good of a friend Madoka is, this is the one thing I can't tell her. I haven't even told my childhood friends, Kazuya or Rei, so there's no way I could tell her, and her, she couldn't have noticed. There are lies and fabrications between the two of us. I'm the one deceiving her. But in this world, <sighs> it's, there are lies that it's okay to tell and those you must tell. That's what I think. You can even interact with everyone normally by telling lies. I believe that. So I'm sorry, Madoka. This is the one thing I can't say. I tried to kill myself. Oh. Fetch, man. Woo! This ain't gonna be a pretty ride, is it? There was a time I wished for death. But... But I'm here because you were there. I can, I can be myself. Also, it's thanks to that goddess. That's why I continue to tell this lie. She saw the girl too. Always. As long as I live. But that does hurt my heart a little. So like I don't know anything, I simply lie to Madoka. And a little more like usual, I act cheerful. Yeah, of course. I wouldn't lie to you, Madoka. No such word exists in our relationship. You wouldn't either, right? There's... 
Something we need to talk about. Her words pierce my chest. I look up to her up up to her strength. I feel a little indebted to her. Sure. I can tell you everything. You said you'd accept everything about me? I believe you. Can I accept it? The way I am? That's right. As normal as possible. So that she doesn't notice anything. Yes. I'll accept everything about you. I say that and put on a smile. Hey, Buki. Do you remember the day we met? Madoka starts talking about memories of the day we met. If this is... If it's this, sure. I can smile naturally. Yeah, that's right. I remember. It's kind of nostalgic. It was more than half a year ago. We've been friends since that day. The entire time until now. Yeah. It really does take me back. At this rate, Madoka will end up getting mad at me like she did then. You don't have to force yourself to smile. When you're in front of people, you don't pretend... Do you Do you pretend to smile when you're carrying on, crying on the inside? Is what she said. That's right. Madoka and I met in that hospital courtyard. It was a spring day. Little birds spreading their wings with all their might and chirping at each other. Just like a little concert. They cry, their cry was beautiful voices. Mm. Flowers had color to the scene. Red, blue, yellow. They're colorful and make people who see them smile. The greenery vigorously stretches out and you can see your garden variety life all over. The pleasant sun gently envelops the world. It's warm and gives me energy. That kind of sun. This was the day I met such a sun. They do see each other like mirrors. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Her first name is Shirogane. Every time I hear Shirogane, I just think of Takaru. So this is Ibuki's actual voice. It's kind of funny, like, I'm a little off, obviously, because I'm a guy doing a girl voice, but I feel like I didn't miss the tonage too far, considering I hadn't heard it before. No, people just like sitting in wheelchairs for fun in hospitals, you know. さっきまでの伸び見られていたのだろうか。Apparently. えっと、あ、はい。やっぱり高校生か。羨ましい。うん。とっても。いいな。高校生って本当素敵。私も学校行きたい。なんか高校に対して変な憧れみたいなの持っちゃっててね。いや。私は学校があまり好きではない。友達
理系やりたいことが決まらないうちにこんな簡単に決めちゃってもいいのかって不安はたくさんあるうんどうして学校にどうしてって大切な仲間と一緒に学び遊びいろんなことを経験することができる単純に経験値が増やせるじゃないそれに思いっきり羽を広げられる私にとっては外の世界よ、right. ああ、勉強は一人でもできるけど、みんなで勉強したら、もっと楽しいんだろうな。Totally、それに、自分の価値観だって広がるわ。一人の意見も大事だけど、みんなの意見聞いて変わることだってあるし。Yes, if you're willing to listen and not just shout people down for being different from you。こんな場所にずっといたんじゃ、価値観も何もないわよね。なんだろう。この子。すごい。そんな風に考えたことなんて一度もなかった私は、とても驚かされた。そして、ちょっと考えてみてください。どういう人たちが生きているのか、人たちが生きているのか、人たちが生きているのか、人たちが生きているのか、人たちが生きているのか、人たちが生きているのか、人たちが生きているのか、人たちが生きているのか、人たちが生きているのか、人たちが生きているのか、人たちが生きているのか、人たちが生きているのか、人 They tell lies, they don't, they, they, they obscure the truth, they like put on a brave face, you put on, like, or like you, know, you follow, like they always they have great social media postings, or maybe a lot of followers, or whatever. Like people who have a claim and, 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 and success, it's easy to see, and they always say like the, 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 the coolest things, or they always seem to have the perfect answer to a question, or they always make you laugh, you know, and you always wish about yourself, like, oh, why can't I be like them? Why can't I be more like them? How much you want to bet each and every one of them wishes they could be like other people too? How much you want to bet that every person whom we think of and think highly of has had just as much darkness, confusion? It's like, it's one of those things just like, it sounds dumb saying it. It's like, well, obviously, of course they are. But like, really actually applying that type of thought pattern to the people whom you look up to the most is difficult because we like to idolize. We like to like, idolize, like, the word idolize is to like, Make someone like it, like to be make someone an idol or an ideal, like a personification of like some kind of dream or or goal. But there is no person on this planet who is actually like the living ideal, not perfectly. They might get close, but they don't ever get there because it's just not how the world works. ただ毎日面倒だなぁと義務のように学校に通ってる私。このことは決定的に何かが違っていた。そんな風に考えられるって、すごいですね。すごい私はただなんとなく学校に通って、なんとなく毎日を過ごしてって、そんな感じだから。ふーん。あなた、夢はないの特に決まってないんですなのに文系か理系かは決めなきゃいけないしもうどうしようってそっかじゃあ今は夢を探してる段階なのね夢を探すどうよ焦ることなんてない夢なんて今すぐ見つける必要はないって私は思う I agree I have to agree because I still don't know if I have my dream yet I guess I kind of have a dream now, but like, not to the point where I'd be willing to do anything it took. Like, I'd love to be able to like make this channel something I could do for a living, to be able to write stories and make like, I'd love to make a new visual novel. I'd like to publish books. I'd like to, to continue to enrich and share things that I love in a way that people enjoy. But to be able to do it full time would be amazing. But, At the same turn, like, I'm not gonna compromise the stuff that I love about this, this channel and the way I make stuff in order to tra、uh, you know, chase trends and, you know, make things successful by force because that's just not me. So I don't know if that quite counts as a dream. I still think this is a hobby because I'm not willing to make it a reality to do what it would probably take. I mean, I do the best I can. But I have my own self imposed limits of what I'm willing to do and not do. Kore kara, anata ga dondon seichou shite, taksan no sekai o mita toki, shizen to, 
自分のやりたいことが見えてくるんじゃないかしら、はあ、自然とそうそう遅かれ早かれ夢は見つかるものじゃない文系も理系も今あなたが興味ある方を取っていいんじゃないかしらなんとなく学校に通うそれもありだと思う<笑>でも少し見方を変えるとねいろんな人たちと会えるじゃない学校ってそこで出会う人の中には自分と180度違う考えを持つ人だってたくさんいると思うの自分の意見や価値観だけが全てじゃない Ooh, your own opinions and values aren't everything. There's a good quote. そんなことに気づかせてくれる場所たくさんの影響をいっぱい受けて人の影響をすぐに受ける人間はダメと言うけれど私はそうは思わない誰かの影響を受けなければ永遠に人は変われない竹のようなしなやかさってうん柔軟性って大事だと思ううんもちろん誰かをまるまるコピーっていうのは違うと思うけどね<笑> yeah, would be different. 自分がしっかり確立している上でもっと広いものの見方が欲しい私じゃ気づかないことは他の人が気づくそれでいい私はそう思うのそんな中でいろんな人たちとの関わり合いの中でそんな風に考えたら学校はもっと有意義なものそう思えるようになるかもしれないわよ思わず感服してしまうこの子すごい。マドカ and I are very similar. We can say a lot of stuff that sounds really cool and inspirational about topics we really don't know much about. Yeah, it's, it's a gift. I don't know if it's a good gift, but it's a gift. 一見同い年に見えるのになんでこうも大人なんだろう。やっぱりすごいな。またすごいって私感心しちゃいました<笑>感心されちゃった同い年ぐらいなのに全然そうは見えなくてそうでも多分同い年ぐらいよねねえあなたあえっと17歳今高校2年ですあらやっぱり同い年あなたも17歳でも私より全然大人<笑>褒めすぎよ。薬と彼女がおかしそうに笑う。でも、あなた最近よく見る顔よね。誰かのお見舞いうん、うん。あなた、え、あ、え、あ、ごめんなさい。失礼だったかしら。あ、うん。うん。ここ最近、突然、ぐっと締め付けられるように心臓が痛み出すの。うん。それって、でも、理由もわからない。治療法だってわからないんです。<笑>早く治るといいんだけど。無理に、笑わなくていいわよ。え辛い時は、辛い顔したって構わないんだから。あなた、誰の前でも、心の中では泣きながら、笑ってるふりをするの This is odd though. So if Madoka said that, why did she then later ask Ibuki to promise to always smile? Seems counterintuitive to what she was saying later. Maybe because she was having such a hard time at the time. ね、病気って不安よね。Yeah, it does. 不安で不安で押しつぶされそうになる日だってたくさんある。そんな日々から逃げ出したいってあがき続ける日だってもちろんある。私だって結構そんな感じ。そんな時、私は泣くわ。Right. ね、辛い時は泣けばいい。You should too. I do. And it's really healthy. Guy, girl, I don't care how tough you think you are or feel like you should be. Cry. You need to cry sometimes. Sometimes you have to make it happen. Like, watch that show, you know, will do it. Or, or get yourself in the mindset, listen to the right songs. Like, when you need to let it out, it really helps heal and helps you feel better. As much as it's embarrassing and frustrating and makes you feel like. There's nothing right in the world for a little while, like just let it happen. Crying is really, really important to people and humanity in general, I think. Rehab is a place you cry, it's not a place you're happy. Rehab is a place you cry, it's not a place you're happy. 
足のうん。そうよ。今はね。この足動かないの。でも、いつかは動くかもしれない。あなたの病気だって、治療法が見つかるかもしれない。あ、そうだ。私があなたの病気が治るよう、毎日祈ってあげるわ。それでね、あなたに笑顔をあげる。きっと神様が、あなたを助けてくれるわ。私もお祈りするから、神様と私、相乗効果ってやつなんて違うわね。<笑>ありがとう。お礼はまだ早いわ。これから、私がもっともっと笑顔にさせてあげるんだから。ああ、そうだ。あなた、名前は私はまどか。北条まどか。まどかちゃんか。素敵な名前。私はいぶき。白金いぶき。That's a cute name, Ibuki. あなただって素敵な名前よ。私、同い年ぐらいの女の子と話せる機会って、今日はとっても楽しかったわ。ありがとう。今度会った時は、また話し相手になってもらってもいいかしら。もちろん。それから私が病院に行く時は、いつもまどかちゃんの病室を訪ねるようになった。彼女はよく笑い、人と付き合うのが苦手な私とは違う。まどかちゃんは、素敵な女の子だった。芯がしっかりしていて、自分を持っている子で、落ち込んでいる時はいつも励ましてもらった。彼女こそ、私がなりたい自分そのものだった。太陽みたいに輝いていて、わた、あの日出会った太陽は、まどかちゃん。あの日から、私には笑顔の花がたくさん咲いた。まどかちゃんに栄養をいっぱいもらって、満開で。大好きな大好きなまどかちゃん。まどかちゃん。でん。Honestly, I'm glad I met you, Buki. Me too. She's back to the usual Madoka. The Madoka who's grinning and bright and like the sun. She draws in a deep breath and closes her eyes. Slowly, like she's preparing herself for something. What could it be? Is she about to tell me something? My heart pounds and my pulse quickens. No matter what it is, we won't change. No way. That's how strong our bond is. Though I may not have a right to say such a thing. Ibuki, I lied. And it resulted in me deceiving you. No, Madoka. That's not me. No, it's okay. It's fine, no matter what it is. I surprise my feelings of guilt and respond. I smile at Madoka and her hand, hard expression loosens. It's like she's a bit relieved. You see, I told you something. That I get all along really well with my dad. Yeah? The cause of my dream being shattered? Her face stiffens. Madoka? Actually, it was my dad. Huh? Her dad shattered her dream? What is she talking about? She smiled joyfully whenever she talked about her dad. Yeah, that's right. Buki, my dad's in prison. She suddenly says something unbelievable. Actually, it was my dad who killed my mom and pushed me. My brain won't work. Madoka's dad, who I heard, was so kind. I don't understand at all. <sighs> You're surprised, aren't you? Me too. I never knew. The day before yesterday, I happened to hear the doctor talking. And I learned the truth. Something in my brain protected me from the shock. You could say it showed me an illusion. The human heart is frail. That's why I believed the lie, my own lie. Even though it happened, I believed he was a good dad,、uh, the dad I was proud of. <laughs> It's strange. I bragged about him so many times to you. It's like I'm hearing Madoka's matter of fact talking from somewhere far away. In my distant memories, Dad was always kind. We would play together and he'd help me study. It was the Dad I loved. Memories of when I loved Dad filled both my heart and body. The, da the Dad I loved and the fa family I loved. Yeah, but that's far from the happy me far as far as the happy memories go. The reality is, Dad found a lover and changed. After that, me and Mom became things he no longer wanted. My family never stopped fighting. Always fl flinging curses at each other. It was painful. I was always hurting. They're steadily disappearing, my memories. 
The memories of when my dad was kind, the warm memories. When my dad stopped hugging me, stopped caressing me, dad changed. My beloved dad. One day when I came home, mom and dad were fighting like always. They were having a hard, heated argument. Dad ended up pushing mom down the stairs. I ran and chased after dad when he fled. Dad panicked and pushed me onto the road. And just like the ca then a car. Yeah, that's how I got like this. All of the memories of that incident were sealed away in some corner of my mind, leaving only memories of the fun times. To appease me. That's why even now I only remain unchanged. I can't change. Dad, I love you. I love you. That's the one thing that's frustrating. If I'd said that, stayed like that, I could have been happy, or maybe I'm happiest now. I only know the answer. Only I know the answer. This is the lie I told you. I'm sorry, Ibuki. I can't speak. My body's rigid and won't move. Madoka. Madoka, who's so shining and bright, for such a thing to have happened? I can't believe it. Should I say something to her? The words won't come, and my body won't move. I... But this is kind of, this is a, this kind of thing is just the past. No matter what happens, after the second it's already in the past, everything this moment will immediately become the past. Right? It's totally fine if you think of it like that. But you know, our past is different. It's not the past, they're memories. Since that day we met in the courtyard, always. Memories. Yeah, we've been making memories together for the past half a year. The day after we met, we bumped into each other in the hallway by a complete coincidence. We went to my room and looked at all the cherry blossoms together through the window. The cherry blossoms back then were wonderful, yeah. The ground was a carpet of cherry blossoms. It was really, really pretty. I was moved to tears, and when I looked over, you had tears in your eyes, too. We instinctively looked at each other and laughed. We steadily became better friends after that day, so it's, it's so nostalgic. A spring, too. In the summer, we watched the fireworks together through the hospital windows. Those huge fireworks at the end? I'd like to see them with someone I like someday. I told you that and, that, and your face turned beet red with embarrassment. <laughs> after that, I got embarrassed, too, and couldn't ask. But I wanted to ask you more about love at the time. That summer, too. Then this season, we became more and more intimate. We talked about various things. Hmm. But I asked a lot of questions, didn't I? Listening to your stories is a lot of fun. I was always in such high spirits. Yeah, this season, too. The two of us. The two of us. Why didn't I notice? The dark parts of the cheerful Madoka. It was unexpected. Not at all. Not one bit. I didn't imagine it. I thought that I understood everything about Madoka, that we were best friends. Am I qualified to be her best friend? Thank you. You gave me so many of them. Memories. You're my best friend. My true precious best friend. Best friend. Madoka? Madoka? Hearing those words, the tears pour out. They won't stop. Ibuki! You called me your best friend. I'm so happy. Even though I'm hiding things, my own weakness, everything about me, and yet, and yet Madoka calls me her best friend. Of course, you're my best friend. Isn't that obvious? Madoka's words painfully seep into my heart. The single wound that opened in the gap between memories we made together. That wound I hid and can't show her. It feels like the weight has been lifted off my chest. Mmm, so refreshing. Madoka. Oh, jeez, come on. Ibuki, smile, smile. Give me a smile, Ibuki. How could I smile? That's impossible, Madoka. You're really strong. That's when Kazuya speaks to Madoka. That's not true. I'm the same as everyone else. I have a lot of weak points, too. Like me. <laughs> yes, Kazuya, like you. That's why you can be, this th be like this, too. Like me, if you have just a little bit of courage. Are you trying to tell me to chase my dream of soccer again? He started talking about soccer himself. I wonder what happened. It's something he never wants to talk about. I knew it. He's so strong. 
He says he's already given up on soccer, but he's facing that reality. Adoka, is that way too? She's been so open about herself, and she has that strong smile like it doesn't even bother her. I'm the only one who's different. I can't join or even listen to their conversation because I'm scared. I know how weak of a human I am, that I did my best and my strength was overwhelmed because I've fallen into this feeling that I'm steadily being left behind by those two. I step away from the two of them and walk toward the fence. I turn my face to face the sky and maintain enough distance that I can't hear their conversation. Then I decide to sing that song in my heart. The song I sing whenever things are tough or I feel lonely. The lullaby that goddess is always singing. The goddess said she also sings it whenever she's lonely or in pain. I listen to the goddess too, and my heart would feel at ease for no, in no time. Recently, even if I speak to her, she doesn't respond. The lullaby I received from that goddess. I close my eyes and I start to fill my heart with it. It's heartrending, and strangely, for some reason, it also makes me feel like I'm listening to it while swinging in the hammock. That lullaby. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what have we started here? That's when I hear Kaze yell and come to my senses. I turn around and see bright light enveloping the two of them. What is that light? It's bright, so I instinctively squint my eyes. What in the world is going on? I forget myself and run over to them. What is happening? I can't see into the light very well, but the moment Madoka whispers something... That light disappears, and the two of them appear. Kazuya's eyes are wide open, and he looks surprised. On the other hand, Madoka still looks like she's not her usual self. In front of them, a black powder descends and dances in the air. What in the world? With this, you can take a step. Madoka gently reaches out her hand and points at Kazuya's leg. The pain. That, that's right. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's as you've noticed. I can't understand what they're talking about. What in the world has happened while I was li wasn't listening? Kazuya? What's wrong? Did something happen? I ask without hesitation, but Kazuya stays silent. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> it's okay. Your leg is completely healed. The pain isn't just temporarily gone. Kazuya's leg is healed. Did something happen, Kazuya? Uh, well... Kazuya doesn't give an answer. I feel like I've been left alone again. The strong Kazuya and the strong Madoka. Their conversation flows on. I'm weak and alone. Even listening to their conversation, I can't guess what happened. The only thing that leaves a strong impression in my head is Madoka's words. Your leg is completely healed. Kazuya told me the doctor said his leg wound wouldn't heal over the nears. That leg, what happened to it? Kazuya won't tell me anything, so I don't understand anything. But Madoka's words... They strangely overlap with the face that, with, in the fact, in with the fact that even though she was forced to live like life in a wheelchair, Madoka's legs healed. That's right. That's why this bothers me. But maybe if Kazuya's leg miraculously healed, this time I won't corner him by telling him to aim for his dream again. Yeah, I'm the one who heard him with those words that time. So Madoka, don't talk to Kazuya about his dream anymore. Hearing any more would be painful. I start to play the lullaby in my heart again. This song is warm and it's like an envelops my heart. The Dipper Mansion. That's when Kazuya suddenly whispers that. I quickly come to, because he said a phrase I'm familiar with. Dipper Mansion. Yes, the Dipper Mansion. You finally remembered. Yes, that is your prescribed star of fate. The Seven Mansions of the Black Tortoise. The first mansion is of the North Zarya. That is the star sign you've been given. What the fetch is going on? Madoka answers like she's just pushing the conversation along. The Dipper Mansion. Like the Dipper Constellation. The Black Tortoise. The Seven Mansions. Nor North Zarya. Words I've heard before are entering my head. Why? Why does Madoka know these words? And Kazuya also said Dipper Mansion. This is the story that Goddess told me. Isn't this just a story that the goddess made up? I see. That's it. She didn't just tell it to me. Madoka and Kazuya know about the goddess too? They've spoken to her. I met the goddess because of what happened at the inter intersection. 
or rather, that God has saved my life. When I was about to commit suicide, yeah, she persuaded me over and over again. That's why I'm alive now. It was after that. I was always the one who would call out to her. She acted like it was a nuisance at first, but I wanted to become friends with that goddess. She did save my life too, but I always felt an affinity with her for some reason. I couldn't see her as a stranger. That's why I talked to her again and again. And when I did, she slowly opened her heart to me as well. I talked about various things, school, friends, family. I would always be the one talking and the goddess would just listen. She was always quiet, but just once, one time she talked to me. It was about the seven mansions of the black tortoise. It was a really, really strange story and really sad, spoken of since long ago, the gathering of the stars in the northern constellations. Those are the seven mansions of the black tortoise. Is that tortoise, right? Uh, to, to Taurus, or maybe? Torres? There are seven in total. The people born under those seven stars are called the Nor uh, Northsaria. The Northsaria each possess their own ability and suffer as a result of it. They face misfortune. She also said each star has its own name, and the seven people must fight because of the destiny of those stars. Sometimes they even kill each other to cut away their own misfortune, to wish for their opponent's happiness, or to protect the one they love. That's why they fight. I remember it well, vividly for some reason, because that story was very scary and heartrending. But you are the North, uh, North Zarya who bears the destiny of the Dipper Mansion. The Dipper Mansion, the Dipper fights, desires competition, and possesses the trait to unite and gather others. Interesting. You should understand, because I'm talking about you. Even a complete stranger like me noticed. Wasn't this a made-up story? Then what? My entire life is controlled by this ability? I've been dancing to the tune of this fate to be uh, uh, of being a North Z uh, Zarya? Is this a true story? Listen well, Kazia. From now on, you're going to be dragged into fights of the seven North Zarya that are beyond your imagination. Unlike before, even if you cry or scream in the middle of it, no one will help you. The seven warriors will start fights anywhere, by any means, in order to break free of their destinies, or because they desire even stronger Nazarian power. This is all in order to steal or eliminate the source of each other's powers, the source of the seven mansions of the Black Tortoise. There will be no escape. Amongst them, there may also be those who think nothing of people's lives. Incredible words are flying out of Madoka's mouth. They don't seem at all like something she'd say. I'm feeling so apprehensive I can't speak. I haven't told anyone about the goddess up until now. That's because it's indirectly related to me thinking about suicide. Also, I didn't think anyone would believe me. But in reality, Kazuya and Madoka know about the story. They're actually talking about it right now. If that goddess isn't just a figment of my own imagination and actually exists. No, she does. Which means the person I was always talking to is actually real then this story is also real. The goddess really experienced it, or saw it, and told me? Kazuya, you can only push on. You must fight. Hold a sword in your right hand and shine it in your le and a shield in your left. And when the princess upon your back... Kazuya is the Dipper Mansion, which means strange things are happening in Kazuya's body too, and not just mine. Or rather, if this story is true... If Kazuya is the Nor uh, Narzaria, this is serious. Hey, you're joking, right? No way. Is she already wrapped up in this? Hey, answer me! Kazuya suddenly yelled angrily at Madoka. Kazuya! What's wrong? Calm down. I lose my composure and interject too. Madoka is staring at me with a sad look on her face for some reason. Kazuya is looking in my direction with a grim expression too. Kazuya. Madoka? Huh? Suddenly, Madoka sways. Her face is pale. She looks like she's about to collapse. Hey, are you okay? Kazuya reaches out his hand. I run over to Madoka, too. Madoka, stay back. Kazuya and I are overpowered by her words, because Madoka's spirit is incredible. Her expression and actions are different from, uh, from usual. 
She's back to the Madoka again. Narzaria. The seven mansions of the Black Tortoise. That sad story. Could they be connected to Madoka's legs being healed too? The goddess. What was the goddess trying to tell me? Before long, Madoka starts talking about North Zarya again, in far, far more detail than I want to know. I don't know what kind of abilities they have, or what kind of personalities. Everything will be mystery until you meet them. You probably won't even be able to tell their Narzaria when you meet them, because in line with their reality you know the Narzaria are flesh and blood human beings who possess unique abilities. Consequently, the Narzaria don't have anything like a special mark. You will have no idea they're Narzaria until they use their ability. But, and this may be a small consolation, there are two tips that can lead you toward victory. One is knowing their ability of the one you're fighting beforehand. The second is absolutely not letting your opponent know your ability type. If you follow these two tips, the key to victory will naturally be handed to your side. By, handed to your side. You should give up, give up boldly changing anyone without knowing any, anything about their ability. It's akin to suicide. I'm sorry. It's truly more than a co consolation. There's no way to know their abilities, yet I'm saying this. Kazuya listens to Madoka with a serious face and the entire time like he's getting his, grinding his, gritting his teeth. There's sweat dribbling down his temple. My heart gradually pounds faster and faster, and Madoka just continues talking. Nezwa. Okay. This is going to get intense, so I'm going to have to stop us here. Holy crap, what is this? I kind of, I really wonder, like, did I make a choice in this game? Like, will I be able to go back and see the stuff from Kazuya's side? Like, I think I will, or am I, or am I locked in now? Because I might kind of regret not going with Kazuya right there, but I feel like we're going to get some decent explanations here anyway. So, whoo boy, let's figure out what's going to happen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Fetch, man. This is just... Really opened up a can of worms. It's getting all expository, though. I'm, I, it's a little concerning to hear that, but at the same time, like it feels like it's going to be important to know. Because holy crap, this definitely took a turn. What do you guys think so far? Man, what a weird, weird twist. Uh, and like, I, Madoka, there's something going. Like, what's going on? Is she part of this? Is she not a part of it? Like, what on earth is all this? But. We're going to have to figure it all out as we go. So thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for spending the time with me and giving the attention to this series. Yeah, I really, really, really want to know what you think so far because this has definitely been like... We're starting to see what the main plot is and it's freaking just going 100 miles an hour now. Uh, thank you again to the patrons who are here supporting me and just, you know, all everything that you've done. You guys helped pick this game. Hope you enjoy your pick. I'm definitely, I'm getting a lot more invested now too. Like I was invested already now that I was starting to like piece together some of the stuff that's been going on, but now it's like super invested. I really have got to see what the heck is happening, but I'm so, so, so pleased with it. I'm, a, I'm really curious to see how this will all like work itself out because there've been people have been acting oddly. Miyu, I wonder if she's one of these mysterious people. She definitely seems to have something really unique going on in her life. And how is Madoka? Because if Madoka is not one of these people, how is she then healed? Is like, was she just kind of a vessel to take it to Kazuya? I just don't know. We'll have to figure all that out next time. But thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me on the channel. As always, it's a pleasure having you here. You guys are the best. You help make this channel so much fun. And I really appreciate you spending the time with me. And I hope you appreciate what I've been able to pull off here. So until the next video, watch me. I'll see me next. I'll see you there. <laughs>